Hello and a very warm welcome to this edition of Rising Stars. I'm Vikram Oza. At a time when demonetization is uh, throwing everyone into a tizzy, the focus on digital payments has become sharper than ever before. There are a number of players in that space, of course. And they are espousing these virtues of a cashless economy. And why not? A lot of their business depends on it, doesn't it? The opportunity today for these platforms getting bigger than ever before. Zeta, of course, is based in Bangalore. Um, and from media reports that I'm gathering, they're going to get an investment of 25 million US dollars by the year 2018. Joining us from India's IT hub in Garden City is Ramki Gadipati, the co-founder and CTO of Zeta. Ramki, great to have you with us. Uh, this is a great place you're at right now. But uh, tell me, what was the starting point of Zeta? What was the germ of the idea then? Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon and uh, thank you for having me on the show. And yes, uh, Zeta's uh, objective has been like building a next generation payment system that's aimed at uh, democratizing uh, payments and uh, democratizing banking for everyone in India. And uh, yeah, the, the starting point of the uh, idea is that we realize that there is a lot of gap uh, uh, between what the regulators and regulation allows for in this country uh, what can be done in this country versus what industry has been able to deliver to the uh, uh, to the general citizens of the country and uh, given that gap we, we are building a system that that I think we can take digital payments to a uh, really large number of people than who it is ac accessible to as of now right, but this is a good uh, starting point obviously you've come a long way already recently you've added three new digital solutions fuel and travel, there's communications in books and periodicals and all these are part of your employee tax benefits uh, product portfolio besides which you already have uh, meal vouchers I'm given to understand and your medical reimbursements and your gift cards so I'm just wondering if uh, the idea is to concentrate a whole lot more on corporate benefits and rewards uh, to employees or are you eyeing a more horizontal growth in your product portfolio before the bigger verticals kick in? Uh, absolutely, I think like the set of products that uh, uh, you, you mentioned here are part of what we call as a Zeta Optima suite. Uh, these are definitely aimed at uh, corporate employees, uh, uh, particularly about the various tax benefits companies pass to their employees, right? Uh, in the form of uh, meal washers, may it be as fuel reimbursements, communication reimbursements, and uh, leave travel allowances. There are several allowances up to. 21 allowances are available in under the Income Tax Act and uh, corporates pass these various allowances and benefits to employees uh, and we have completely digitized this uh, uh, the uh, entire benefit suite and uh, made it available to employees in the form of uh, apps, uh, web services and uh, in so many other ways as uh, NFC payments and so on and so forth. Uh, but yes, uh, these, this is the first uh, uh, large product that we built on uh, the Zeta platform and uh, we have also recently uh, announced Zeta Supercard for all consumers uh, which can offer really secure payment mechanisms to all the people um, across the country and uh, we, we are going to definitely introduce many more products. Uh, there will be horizontal growth in the Zeta, Zeta portfolio. Sure, but uh, tell me about uh, the setting up of Zeta. How difficult has it been uh, for you to establish uh, the kind of partnerships you would need uh, to get it up and running, all your acceptance network, uh, while it allows employees to use their rewards and grants at one level. Obviously, uh, you need those partnerships in place to kind of uh, make sure that uh, it's large enough so that employees take maximum benefits away. Absolutely, I think uh, that's a critical as aspect of uh, building any payment system. Acceptance is a one very, very important aspect, and uh, we are fortunate to have relationship with uh, banks like RBL Bank. And uh, on the acceptance side, we have done a lot of work talking to brands, talking to uh, small to medium enterprises, large enterprises, and so on and so forth. One one aspect of our solution is that we are completely. Uh, working with MasterCard and uh, uh, the entire payment system is available and accessible over MasterCard. The payment system is completely available and accessible over IMPS, NEFT, and uh, to for, for accommodating all the small enterprises, we have a large merchant team who goes after uh, small merchants who are not yet accepting cards and and gives them a 
mechanism to accept Zeta payments. And uh, in addition to all of this, we also have a completely NFC based solution, which we call as a Zeta Express, uh, that autom uh, that completely digitizes uh, uh, campus cafeterias and payments within offices. So we, we did a lot of work to create the acceptance. We have a large 200 plus member merchant acquisition team, which, uh, which actually uh, curates the merchants, adds them to our network, and also creates acceptance in many places where it's crucial for availing this uh, element. Sure, but benefit. the way I'm seeing it, Ramki, import. the way your revenue model works, you don't charge the companies or uh, employees who use your platform, you only charge commission to the merchants. Has that turned out to be uh, prudent in hindsight? Uh, how is it really working out for you? Any, charge, any changes in this uh, kind of model that you are uh, contemplating right now? Uh, uh, so uh, we uh, we as a promotional offer we don't charge to the corporates. Uh, we do intend to charge a small fee to the corporates based on the uh, benefits and uh, services that they are uh, availing on the platform. Uh, as of now, yes, a majority of our corporates are uh, uh, avail the promotional uh, pricing that we have for them. And uh, yes, uh, uh, the majority of the revenue also comes from uh, uh, the commissions we charge to the merchants. Um, I, I do think as a, as a very fundamental level, I think there will be uh, disruptive changes in the industry where uh, the, the MDR, the standard MDR, merchant discount rate it's called, uh, that's charged to the merchants is going to disappear uh, slowly, definitely, but surely. Uh, and I think that um, we, we are prepared for that and we have different alternative revenue streams in mind when the industry changes from an MDR model to a zero MDR model, uh, which I think is a very likely thing to happen in future. No doubt about it, Ramki, that this is a very dynamic space that you're in right now and the focus on it has gotten that much more sharpened now uh, with the onset of uh, demonetization. Uh, right now is a struggle period, but as we see uh, much more of the cashless economy uh, develop in this country, uh, players like you can only hope to uh, reap the kind of benefits. Uh, the opportunities are quite huge. We wish you great luck with all of them, Ramki. Thanks indeed for joining us. And with that, it's going to be a wrap on this edition of our show, Rising Stars. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.